Hey guys, I'm back. We're going to have a special treat today. I'm going to be taking on One Spit in Britonia. It's going to be 3,000 points, no grand armies, and this is going to be a Brawler Bash practice game. So we randomly roll off to see what scenario we're going to do, and we roll for um, Scenario 4. And this is going to be the one, if you have the Brawler Bash um, Players Pack, there's like a um, token whatever in the center of the table. And basically, if you have a unit with 4 to 2 within 6 inches of it, you get a thousand bonus victory points. And if, if both of you have a unit within six inches with um, fortitude, then you split it and you each get 500 victory points. And um, for Brawler Bash, we have these objective cards where you can get all the bonus um, VP. And for this one, we both chose the um, scenario, not the scenario, the objective card where you get 500 VP if you kill the enemy general and bonus. So we're both just trying that. And I'm trying that out because that seems like that's the hardest one for me to ever get. So I wanted to practice that. So let's take a look at my army. I'm going to have uh, Black Orc Warboss as my general this time. I, I just can't, I can't risk not, I can't risk losing the magic from animosity. And I'm, I'm trying to make him a, be a bit of a, a tank here where he's going to have the crown of command. Because I also, it seems like lately Savage Orcs are, are dying way easier to a lot of the new things. And so I need them to stick around more because they seem like they're they're failing um, to win battles as much now as they used to. Uh, I also gonna have um, I, I'm bringing back the old big boss on the wolf here. Yeah, he doesn't have animosity. He can go 30 inches to start off with with the uh, vanguard and you know regular march, so he can really get behind the lines pretty fast. I'm also um. Four Brawler Bashers, several objectives or scenarios deal with Fortitude. So I'm throwing in a couple extra banners. I'm going to have 30 Night Goblins archers with a banner. And I'm going to put five War Boys with a Flaming Banner. I'm just trying that out. I don't, I don't have those painted yet. Uh, I was thinking about having those for Southern Assault. So I thought, is it possible for me to have those with Brawler Bash too? Let's find out. So let's look at One Spitten's Army. And I'm not sure in his report he'll have it more detail than I do. Basically, what I can remember now, I know you know his guy's Lord with the heroic killing blow, and I know it can reroll wounds. His other stuff, I'm not can't really remember what they had. I know he has a second Lord, which is a Green Knight model. He's got his BSB. He's got a level four beast. Um, what do they call those damsels? And she's on the steed, and he's got the level two beast on foot, and that's the one you have to worry about that can turn into a monster. He's also going to have two naked paladins. And then he's going to have his three big units of Knights of the Realm, a little small unit of Errantry Knights, two trebuchets, a couple of um, small archer units, and he's going to have a giant unit here of over 50. I think it's 55 men at arms with full command. So this is a giant unit. He doesn't put him in horde formation because he knows it's probably better for him to have the steadfast than you know being a horror formation and worrying about my trolls and my savages. So start looking at his deployment on this side on the left he's gonna have his five errantry knights, a trebuchet, and these two knight realm units. Um, the first one is gonna have his general and level four mage and they're gonna have the leadership banner and the next one has another lord in his BSB and I, I think it has a paladin too, a naked paladin. They're gonna have the flaming banner so that's the one I'm worried about trying to get to my trolls. Can you know that's his gigantic unit of um, men at arms, and they barely even fit on the table. It's going to the 12 inches, they they barely fit. I think he knocks a few on the floor a few times because they're so close to the table edge. And they're gonna have the level two beast in there, and then he has a dozen naked paladin, trebuchet, his two units of archers, and then another unit of knights of the realm here, right on the corner. And also, I forgot for this scenario, it's like a modified dawn attack, so you have to put two units in every deployment zone. So that's why he has this knights of the realm unit way over here, and not with the rest of them, because he's basically forced to do that by the scenario. So look at my deployment, and the the two units I'm gonna have to have in the zone here is gonna be the wolf riders and the chariot. So that's the only reason they're way off here. And I'm going to start trying to castle up a little bit around this hill. I don't want to get multi-charged by his lances, at least until I try to um, soften them up a bit. Um, so I'm going to have my trolls and my savages with my bunker kind of castled around here. And I have some boar boys and a mangler and other wolves and stuff. 
up in front of them to try to slow down his knights. So continuing on my deployment, and you can see a better look here how I'm casting it up. Uh, we'll also have my my I, some of the stuff I put down first because I was trying to see where he's going to put most of his knights at. So that's why I have these night goblin archers here all by themselves because I didn't really care about where they went. I just wanted to make sure I was putting my two big blocks in a farther away position so I could try to soften up those knights before they came in. I didn't want to get multi-charged too early on. And so here's a look at the vanguards on this side of the table. And then the vanguard over here. I just vanguarded a little bit here. I think I've only vanguarded maybe six inches. Okay, so he prays and I get the first turn. And then you know, I pray and my savage orcs fell on my monster. Luckily I have a black orc in there and he kills one of them so they'll be okay. I'm going to move up my guys a bit. Uh, I've, I've Not too much. I'm still keeping my main blocks here back a bit so that um, I can try to soften them up a bit. So going to magic, I'm going to hand a Gork, my Mangler, a little bit more so that it can be up here blocking his guys a bit. And I have it so it's too far away from his men at arms so they can't march onto it and kill it. Um, he lets that go so that when I try to six dice foot of Gork, he can try to spell it. And he uses five dice and he gets exactly the same as me so he's able to spell it. When we go into shooting, you can see that big handful of knights he's taken off. That's what my two Doom Divers are going to do. I have my first, well, then I'm going to shoot both my rock lobbers also at that night unit. The first one's going to misfire and can't shoot this turn. The second one's going to hit his BSB. He's going to fail his lookout, sir, and I'm going to roll a one to wound. Oh, why? So, Bertone on turn one, he's going to be moving up here. He's going to have his one of his naked paladins in that flaming battle unit come out and land on my mangler, and the mangler's barely, barely going to kill it. I think it does three wounds barely after his saves. So I, I, I think I barely, I, I rolled something like 14 hits. So he, he barely, he barely kills it. Or maybe I think I may roll 10 hits. But anyway, I feel like that's a good trade for a mangler. Even though it was, it, I mean, the paladin was pretty much expendable, but it's still worth enough points where I think it was a good trade. And then he's going to move his Aaron to Knights here to block off my big boss that's moving towards his trebuchet. And also, I forgot these wolf fighters here, where this little lake is. The reason they're not moved up farther is because they had failed animosity as well. So that's why they're so far away from the trebuchet. And so he's able to block the big boss because it's still a pretty long charge of trying to make it to the trebuchet on my next turn because I had failed animosity. And I couldn't march up to the trebuchet to start with. So I go into his magic. I can't quite remember what he did. I think he shoots an amber spear or something at my doom diver that's behind my savages and I have to dispel that because I, I don't want the Doom Diver dying because it's already doing good work shooting against his knights. So we're going to his shooting one of his trebuchets is going to misfire and it can't shoot this turn the other one's going to shoot that same Doom Diver he tried to Amber Spear it's going to hit it and wound it but only do two wounds so I have one defiant goblin crewman left and then his archers are going to shoot at my two wolf fighter units that are on this side of the table and kill one from each and Orc and Goblin turn two, and look at that. The Night Goblins feel animosity, and they're forced to charge his general's unit. And even though it's a long charge, I, I make it easily. Uh, I wanted those Night Goblins. This is terrible for two reasons. I mean, the Night Goblins are going to die sooner or later because they were going to try to slow down these knights. But this means I can't shoot or foot of Gork, his general's unit, because I'm in combat with it. So th that's just terrible. And then up top, I'm going to stupidly charged my wolf fighters my big boss said it's Aaron to Knights hoping that I can break them I shouldn't have done that I should have probably maybe just moved the wolf riders right in front of the knights and then move the big boss around behind them so I can start taking out his trebuchets and again again my savages have failed animosity and I've killed two more savages with my black orc big boss uh what else fails I, I don't think I think I don't think anything else fails but then I'm going to charge my Boar boys into the flank of this knight unit coming up, and I'm going to decide that I'm going to go ahead and charge my wolf fighters into the rear, because I'm worried I might not win combat because he's still going to have his ranks, his banner. I'm only going to have a flank and a flank and a charge. I might not win, so I won't have that rear bonus. Here's a coast up look at this charge, and and as soon as I did, I started wishing I'd spent the 15 points to have a 
Warboy boss in there, they will be strength six on the charge. So I really I accomplished nothing in magic. And we're going to shoot shooting though, I'm gonna keep concentrating on that night unit with the flaming banner. And after my Doom Divers, I'm gonna have it down to where it's just a couple knights and a couple characters. I think both my lavas scatter off wildly. One, the same lava that misfired last time misfires again and can't shoot this turn. So two misfires, but at least I, it's not destroying itself. So when you look at these combats, the combat over here, our poor boy's going to come in. They're going to do absolutely nothing. No wounds at all. My, he's it's attacking me. He's not going to wound me at all. He's actually going to do three wounds to my wolf riders, and I'm going to make all three armor saves. And then what do the wolf riders do? They kill a knight. So the boar boys might as well not even charge the end. <laughs> so he's steadfast, which what I figured. I was just hoping, you know, that he would break from the steadfast, or I could at least hold him up for a while. He's going to make a steadfast check though, and so now I'm not going to have any strength bonuses going to the next combat. So, but I'm hoping that I can hold off long enough just to keep them from coming around. So you can see on this side of the table, it was a disaster. Of course, I knew the Night Goblins were going to break. I mean, I didn't want them to be charging in there. But I was, I was hoping that my Wolf Riders, my big boss, would have done something to his Errantry Knight, Knights. They do nothing. They don't wound at all. He's going to pursue my Wolf Riders. They're going to get away and flee all the way to the other side of the Night Goblins because we fought that combat back there first. And my big boss is going to be behind his lines a bit. So now my Night Goblin is going to lose. Of course, they're not going to do absolutely nothing. They're going to break, and they're going to get away from his um, Night Unit. So they're going to be keeping him from being able to go into my Trebuchet. Now, I think what happens to my Wolf Riders is that they get destroyed by his Night Unit that's pursuing my Night Goblins because they can't flee because this is not a um, flea reaction kind of thing. I think that's what happens to them because they're not on the table anymore. So Bertrandian in turn two, he's going to charge his naked paladin and I think his flame banner unit at these wolf riders that are going to flee. Then he's going to charge his general's unit at my fleeing night goblins. I'm eight inches away from my rock lava. So I don't, I'm hoping I don't make it to my rock lava so that he either has to complete the charge and then be where my savages can try to get to him. Because also if I flee through my rock lava, I have to run the risk of failing my, um, panic test and I think I'm close enough to my general no that's my general's way away so there's a good chance I would lose my rock lava when to shoot this turn so um I only roll a six so he catches those night goblins and then he's gonna reform like this and these wolf fighters are already there in the way he's reforming like this because I can still get my savages through that gap right there once he marches his men at arms up there's still barely enough room that I can move my savages through there and hit his his knights and there's no way he could he could go where I wouldn't be able to hit them. So he forms up like this to try to um, make it a little bit better situation for himself. Uh, and also because, you know, you see that mangling working back there. In this formation, I need like a 12 to make it to his knights. If he stayed in bus formation, I would have needed like a little bit to make it to his knights. So he wanted to be a bit wider. So going to the rest of the turn, he's going to get the Curse of Anahar off on my savages that has that charge on his his general's unit. Cause I'm only going to need a 7 to make it. It's going to be irresistible. He's only going to, he's going to roll 7 for his miscast. And I think he kills a knight. Oh, that's not good. His shooting, though, is not going to kill my Doom Diver. He's going to, both for his um, trebuchet is going to scatter off. But that, that curse is really going to make it a difficult choice for me what to do. And over here in combat, it's, it's not good. He's going to kill a boar boy and a couple of wolf riders. I'm going to do nothing to him. I'm strength three all around now. I'm going to break. He's going to pursue my boar boys and catch them. My wolf riders, are, it's just two of them back here. The good thing here is that my trolls can make it to the flank of those knights where I'll have like a couple trolls in the combat. But I'm like 16 inches away. I'll need to roll a 10, which is not a good chance. But, you know, you might as well risk it. I've also got a um, chariot that's going to be able to hit his flank as well. I mean, not his flank, his rear as well. So, Orc and Goblin turn three. First off, I'm, this savage is going to fail animosity for the third straight time. So I'm going to kill another two um, biggins with my Black Orc. 
So I've killed five of my own big ones from animosity, three straight animosity failures. I'm going to decide I have to go for it to charge his general's unit. I'm going to declare a log and, and charge on in and just risk how many more big ones are going to die from the curse. And I think I lose six or seven more. Um, so I've lost 11 big ones between animosity and the curse getting into this combat, but it, I think it's worth it. I, I, I need to do it. I mean, this is the best chance I would ever have to go against his general's unit. I'm also, um, as you can see here, I'm able to make it through, and I think I've got three savages into the combat. So over here, the trolls aren't going to make it. I rolled like a six and a one. So the trolls are going to zip up six inches, but not, it's not going to be enough. The seven's not enough to make, make it into the flank. The chariot, of course, makes it easily. So all I have is a lowly chariot here against an entire night realm. Night of the realm unit. So this is my other movement. And first you'll see this um, mangler. It's going to make the 12 inches to his knights. And I'm going to have an angle so they'll go through his knights and my wolf riders that are rallied there. And not through my own savages. I'm going to kill four knights and I'm going to kill my wolf riders. Which is good a trade. But that's also going to panic. Those wolf riders down is going to panic my rock lobby you see down there. So it's not going to be to shoot this turn. And it's also going to panic my wolf chair that was up there. And that wolf chair is going to flee off the table. Now the Doom Diver hasn't failed panic. It just got knocked sideways when I march up my bunker here. And I'm going to realize after I do this and I'm going into magic. How stupid am I to march those guys up there where his big gigantic men at arms unit <laughs> can charge me? And so I realize how dumb I am. I'm going to hand a cork uh, <laughs> my bunker over here to get away from his men at arms. And he's going to let that go because he needs to stop Air We Go and Fist of Gork from getting off, which he does. I think he scrolls one and then dispels the other one. So let's talk about this. I can't remember what my shooting does this turn because of this. My wolf chariot is going to come in there, beat that Knight of the Realm unit, and run them down. A 50 point wolf chariot did what my boar boys and my wolf fighters couldn't do. <laughs> this was the craziest thing I've seen in a long time. That wolf chariot is a hero. But here, and also you can already see here that my shooting does take out the rest of his knights, so the heal only has his two characters in that unit there. So I did do stuff in shooting. But here, I, I get the giant win with the wolf riders, but I cannot break his lord's unit. I mean, I get the plus two for the wog. I got, the, I got giant thing but I only win by three he's gonna roll a six uh, look, I, yeah he rolls a, yeah he rolls a six he, he he exactly makes it I think he needed to roll a seven but he because he, he was leadership 10 he's gonna make it he's gonna stick and then I'm gonna do this dumbest thing I'm gonna reform sliding down he couldn't see me with his men at arms before I did that why did I do that I was thinking I'm gonna get more savages into the combat Oh my god. So I'm now I'm going to give my rear to these savages. I was not thinking at all. So yeah, Bretonian turn three. Here come the men at arms into the rear of my savages. <clears throat> On the plus side, the many savages I have back there attacking, I should cancel out the combat res he gets, but I absolutely have to dispel his transformation spell. I still got my scroll in my back pocket. I have to do it. I have no choice. Nope, he's going to roll irresistible, <laughs> so I can't use my scroll, I can't stop it. So now there's the, um, what was it, Mountain Chimera, or Chimera, whatever you call it, in in my rear. Uh, and then the worst, it, his miscast, he's going to lose his two wizard levels. That's not going to help me, though, because it's, it's, oh my god. So this is actually the start of my next turn, but this is the best picture I have to show at the end of the combat. I'm going to do enough wounds to his Chimera so that he'll be dead if I can dispel the spell but he just goes to town on me um, I'm gonna lose a ton of savages and you can always see my as you can see my mangler is also gonna go through here because it's moving randomly it's going through all their units but it's only gonna kill like four savages but he has just gone to town on me and I, I'm, I'm gonna lose the combat I'm stubborn at least um, on the first turn of that combat, he didn't issue a challenge. On the second one, he does. I'm going to answer it with my, my champion. 
And I'm also going to make a huge blunder where I forget that my Warlord is base, base strength 5. So I'm this entire game and my entire next game, I'm going to say I'm strength 6 with a great weapon. And strength 7 on the first turn with a chopper. Instead of being strength 7, strength 8. This is a huge blunder. I don't, I don't understand how in the world I made that. Oh, so I, I don't know. The first, this first, this combat, I know it doesn't affect me because I don't do any wounds at all with my general. But going on, this was a huge blunder. I don't know how many, how many night kills it's going to cost me. And and in my turn here, I'm going to charge my bunker at his flank. And when the mangler goes through, I think he kills that knight there, so I have to fudge up and move up a bit after that. All right, so going to my magic, I need a 15 to dispel that chimera. And I roll all my dice, and I get exactly a 15. So I barely got that chimera gone. It's, it's done its damage, though. But, oh my goodness, it was so close to that thing still staying around. So going to magic and shooting, I'm not going to get Airy Go or Fist of Gork off. I'm going to kill enough of his energy knights with my Doom Divers so that he only has one energy knight left. He has no lookout sir for my lavas. I'm gonna get a direct hit with one of them and roll a one to wound again. And so you, you can also see here at the end of this combat, I'm only gonna do two wounds to his his damsel with my BSB and my night goblins. He's gonna kill a whole bunch more savages and stuff. Uh, I, I'm gonna do one wound to his lord. Uh, I think, I think, no, actually, I don't do wound his lord this time. I don't know when I wound his lord. I'm going to sacrifice my level one orc shaman in the challenge with his lord. So, um, I'm going to lose again, but only by two. So, I'm going to be nine with a reroll for my general and seven will reroll my, um, bunker, and I'm going to make it and, and stick. So, Petronian in turn four, he's going to land his last entry knight on my mangler and kill it. In his shooting, he's going to um, finally destroy that doom diver that had one wound left, and he's going to destroy one of my rock lavas with his trebuchets. And so in the combat, I'm going to lose by about four this time. One wound is to be done to my general. I've got him down where he's just got two knights and his general in that unit, so I can still try to pick up a lot of points there. I'm gonna lose by I think as I said I think I lose by four so I'm gonna now I'm gonna reroll my general's unit five to reroll my bunker the bunker's gonna fail and flee off the table. <sighs> Things aren't looking good for the old orcs and goblins. So I can go turn five. I've been doing a cat and mouse up here with his other naked paladin and trying to get around it to his trebuchet. I finally say you know screw it I'm gonna go and charge that paladin and see what happens. And so I'm magic. I'm finally going to get here we go off. It's too little too late. But you can see here, finally, finally in shooting, I'm going to kill that BSB. I think the, the last Doom Diver hits and does a wound to his Lord and a wound to the BSB. And then my last Rock Lob is going to direct hit again for the third time. And finally, not roll a one. He fails his ward. I finally kill that BSB. Oh my goodness, finally. So we go back to this combat. He's killed my last big un. So he's going to get all those points. But I'm going to kill his last knights. So he only has his general. So I get all those points. Now my general and his general is in a, a challenge with each other. He's going to do three wounds to me. One of them is the killing blow. Thankfully I'm going to reward that one. So I'm going to live. I'm going to reward one of the other two wounds. So my general going to be down to one wound. So that's scary. i just hoping I can hold out long enough. To kill his general because not only do I get the points for that and the 100 bonus points, but I'm going to also get 500 objective points if I could just kill his general before the game ends. He's also going to do one wound to my um, Great Shaman. I'm going to stick again from my Stubborn Crown. And what happens here? Oh my goodness. My Wolf Rider kills his Paladin. Why was I dancing around that Paladin all game? I, <laughs> I killed it. And then I um, overran into his trebuchet. So returning in turn five, and yeah, um, he's actually not going to kill me. What's going to happen? I'm, I'm going to do one wound to him in the challenge. He's not going to wound me, but I'm going to roll a ten for my stubborn test. 
I forgot about I I had forgot about the objective thing where you could defeat leadership temp for one turn. I probably would have used it a long time ago. I don't think I would have waited this long to use the leadership ten. I was I would have used it I think the very first time after my BSB was dead. So it wouldn't have mattered at this point when I roll the ten. But I roll a ten and he's gonna run me down. He's got only one wound left on his um general, but I've only got one Doom Diver that can shoot at it. Because he's gonna be in combat with my other rock lava with his his green lord here. And what's gonna happen? We're gonna fight that combat first. And he's gonna flub his rolls and not win me at all. So I'm gonna pass my break test with my rock lava. So I'll be sticking around with that. And also you can't see here, but my big boss is gonna destroy his trebuchet at the top of the table. So all I really have left now is my big trolls, which he really can't touch. And some war machines and my big boss. And I I think he's I think it just turn also his archers kill my wolf chariot. So I think all I have left is my big boss, some war machines, and my big unit of trolls. So we're going to Goblin turn six. You know, my trolls are feeling stupid again. So really all I have is my big balls zipping up here. I mean, it's too late for him to try to get that other trebuchet, though. So the rest of my turn, my Doom Diver is going to scatter way off his general. So I'm not going to be able to kill it. And then down here, he's going to destroy my Rock Lobo. And so we're going to end his turn six him turn six here by him doing what he calls the Malorian, where he's going to swift reform into this water um, rank here and then move up towards the objective marker. And I think he's going to be facing it, facing the marker and not facing the way it looks in the picture. Um, so he's able to claim this objective marker and um, get the extra bonus points for it. So we had this up, this is a victory for Bretonia, and I think before objectives and stuff, I think he has around um, 2,500, and I have 1,950. I think that we forgot to give him half points for his general, but that doesn't really matter. Then he killed my general, so he's going to get another 500 points, and he's going to get 1,000 from, from the scenario. I get zero from the scenario, and I don't get his general. So I think he's going to end with a little bit more than 4,000, and I should probably be a little bit over 2,000. So I'm going to lose by about 2,000 points. And the win-loss doesn't really matter for Brawler Bash, so getting about 2,000 points is still good for a loss. That's still a good amount of points. So if you're going to lose, that's the way you want to lose. I think that um, the turn of points here was that, you know, the main thing was that Mountain Chimera, I couldn't dispel it because they're irresistible. It just killed a, a ton of my big ends. And then the other thing before that, I did the stupid thing where I re wheeled down so that he could see my rear to start with. Also, I killed five of my own big ones with animosity. You know, that could have been huge to have those big ones during the fight that could attack his men at arms or could attack knights. And then I forget that I'm strength five, strength seven with a great weapon, and I'm saying I'm strength six with a great weapon. That probably cost me a knight or two in kills. So those are just three huge blunders. But I had a lot of good things where my chariot destroyed the knight unit. My of Doom Divers killed tons and tons of knights. Um, and my big boss killed a paladin. And I was just sticking around, sticking around with my crown of command. I just wish I hadn't made those other two blunders where maybe it could have made a difference over the course of the game. But anyway, um, this is real fun. I, I, I like the way I, um, I played this, even though I lost. I felt I did the right decision to go for it and try to take out his general's unit. I really think I should have broke them on the charge. And, you know, I think 9 out of 10 times that's, that was the right call to do. Even though it took my trolls out of the game, you know, if I had taken out his general's unit, the trolls, he wasn't going to break them with just one night unit. So they were going to be safe anyway. So anyway, I had a lot of fun here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Feel free to subscribe or like and comment. I'll talk to you guys next time I play the second game against Ogres, and I will have that up in the next couple of days, I hope. Talk to you guys next time. Thanks for listening.